Motor shows are excellent places to see what manufacturers are up to in their back rooms. Geneva is one of the biggest of the year, it just happened a month or two back. And in fact, the car we're reviewing this week on Ignition GT was unveiled in concept form back in 2013 in Geneva. Yeah, that's right, known as the LFNX, it's now coming to production as the Lexus NX. And the great thing for me is that the turnaround time from concept to production model has really sped up over recent years. In fact, this car looks better than the concept version. Totally agree with you, Marius. They, they spoke about it from an origami perspective, that it was supposed to look like a crumpled sheet of paper. In the flesh, it's got that character, but it's more streamlined. And even though Lexus is very late to the compact SUV segment with the NX, it's all about styling. They really have done a great job in changing that conservative fuddy-duddy appearance. Mm, but let's not hope it's just all about looks. I feel like we need our party hats on. Why is that? Because finally. <laughs> Nine years, eh? Nine years, yeah. This engine has been in development for nine years, which is, I don't know, I, I don't know if that's a long time. I don't think so. Engines are often in development for a long time. Um, no, that's a long time. Unfortunately, it just does make it seem, although it's great for Lexus, two litre twin scroll turbo engine, but, you know, we've kind of seen it before. I know, it's, it's just surprising me that the Japanese are so slow with this technology. We can speak Mazda with Sky Active nonsense finally a turbo so it means it's probably going to end up in a Toyota as well and it's really good because one thing you know with Lexus they are going to put a ton of gear and equipment in your vehicle a lot of electronic stuff so the NX is quite a big bulky heavy car and I've really enjoyed driving it having that turbo because your in-gear acceleration has been amazing. Yeah I mean it's fantastic they've also put a, a new gearbox in here it's a six-speed auto it's seamless it is very good and it's also got the the AI shift which is artificial intelligence which monitors your G's so that if you're in the middle of a corner, it doesn't change gear. Yeah, also, again, not something new, but it's, it's a nice to have. It's important with your driving style. The car's kind of figuring out what sort of driver you're going to be and obviously optimizes that. But I, mean, I think efficiencies are critical. I know they've done a lot of work to reduce things like turbo lag. They've put the intercooler right on the engine so the downpipe is shorter. Yeah. And they've also got world first, their engine, um, their Four cylinder head. 4 to 2 on the exhaust manifold system so it really is about optimizing the car so if you're driving efficiently you're getting benefit out of that and if you're driving a bit more spiritedly you're getting that performance too having said that though I was quite surprised you know fuel consumption wasn't that great I was sitting at about 10.5 on our way out yeah. for a 2 litre turbo I was expecting a little bit better well maybe that, that's because the car is quite heavy yeah. because of all those electronics I mean you read through the press release there's just so much engineering in this car it's, I read through it and kind of thought what happened to four Four wheels and an engine makes exactly. up a car, but well, it, it is very fancy. I'm glad you're talking four wheels because it's obviously all wheel drive and they've got their torque vectoring system as well. And it's actually surprisingly nifty and handy off road as well because you've got the diff lock so you can go places. Yeah, we sure. took it on the GT Humps track mm. and, it, and it was fairly competent, surprisingly so. Yeah, so I mean, not, not that you're going to want to take a car that looks as flipping good into the bush, but I mean, for gravel roads and, and the lifestyle elements, it certainly has that. Did you find driving, it feels like a lot bigger car in terms of its driving style. It's not pointy and squirt and no. solid and it's quite... It's a bit deceptive because we do have the F Sport package on this car, so it does have a sporty look to it and it obviously has the Sport Plus mode that only comes with F Sport. Yeah. But no, it's not a sporty drive. As much as the engine is very responsive um, and the handling is good, it's not what you describe as sporty. It's a little bit wafty in fact, which maybe goes to that big car feel yeah. that you were talking about. But I, yeah, we, we say that, but I think I must say, for me, that's not a negative. Because I think that's why I'm buying an SUV. I'm buying it to go over the bumpy roads like we're driving on today and feel comfortable. And Lexus is all about the luxury and the comfort. And this is a typical Lexus drive and experience. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. It's, you say that's why you buy an SUV. It's also why you buy a Lexus. That's because true. you like that comfort, that softness. And you'll be then familiar with all the interfaces, which... Mm, feel a little bit dated also. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, the concept is so close to what we're now finally sitting with in terms of production model. It looks amazing from the outside. Yeah. The interior, it's got everything you could want. I mean, every creature comfort is here, which is Lexus. But it is old tech. I mean, you've still got traditional dials where everyone has got TFT screens. You've got a tiny screen. You know, your, your climate control is kind of... Even that clock, which I know, I know is very much a Lexus thing, but it's like I keep I keep looking for the digital clock and it's not there because it's in the middle. But and it's also very busy. I just I, the layout just feels 
I, I don't know. Because other cars seem to have simplified. advanced and simplified, this feels very busy to but me. But I, I suppose, you know, that is also that feeling of the luxury. You've got all these things. Porsche, yeah. how, how busy are they? Full yeah. of flipping buttons Lots everywhere buttons. too. Yeah. The thing that I find irritating today, I mean, I know everyone's got their, their interface system that they use. Lexus is stuck to their little scrolling mouse thing. It works really well on certain things, but when I was trying to enter stuff for navigation, oh my goodness, it is irritating. So that was a bit of a, a bit of a negative for me. But did I say something bad about Lexus? Oh my word! Oh my word! About Stop. that party hat. Stop! Let or me is get it out. Blue moon. Dump me! Dump me! <laughs> okay, out you get. <laughs> Sorry, Lexus. <laughs> I feel like we were quite negative about the car and I don't feel negative about it, I quite like it. In fact, you're going to like it even more when you look at the price because starting at 540, heading up to top spec, the F Sport version that we're in, which is about 660, it is right slap bang in the middle with all the competitors, whether it's Q5s or Infinities. I think though in terms of competitors, it's important to put this in perspective in terms of size because Lexus does have the RX in terms of SUVs. The NX, if you want to think of it in terms of size, is probably in Audi terms, something like a Q4. <laughs> and that's probably coming, isn't <laughs> it? Probably. But look, one thing I can say that I love with Lexus, and the same thing with Infiniti, in the world where everyone looks the same, you buy this car, you're going to turn heads, you're going to look different, and that's impressive. And it's all in, no extras. <laughs>